City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hi everybody. This video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not actually making something, but I wanted to explain my thinking process in selecting a pattern that's the right size for me or for my daughters or whoever I'm sewing for at this point. And it's a little bit different than the standard pattern envelope size. And um, I thought it would be easier to do this as a separate video. So let's get started. Oh, I actually learned this method many, many, many years ago from the fabulous Nancy Zeman of Sewing with Nancy. And um, she does go into more detail in it in some of her books. And I found one of the books that has it is this one. I have several of her books. And it does go through more in detail than I'm going to cover how she works this method but um just wanted to point that out in case you're curious and you want to get more details so let me tip down the camera okay so i just have one of my little fashion sheets here and i'm just outlining her in a darker pencil so that you can see um what i'm going to be talking about because it might make more sense on a blank piece of paper um, so you can see these sheets are actually kind of fun. They have a very, very light drawing of a body on it. So you can then add your own decoration. So I've traced out the front. Let me give her some cleavage here so we know that is her front. Here's her collarbone. Okay. So the concept is that when you are trying to find a pattern to fit a body size and a body shape. The hardest part to fit is up here, okay? The waist, you can add or subtract easily. The hips, pretty much add or subtract more easily. It's up here because it's not just going around the bust, it's actually fitting the neckline and fitting the shoulders and fitting the armhole. Okay, so say you have an armhole right there. Getting all of that to fit a body size. Because on a pattern envelope, I have this one here. Say, uh, if you're looking at the measurements, it'll say, okay, for size 16, it wants a bust that is 38 inches, right? That can encompass a whole different body shape. You can have someone with an extremely small cup size, but is uh, bigger all the way around with a 38 inch bust. You can have a very, very slightly built figure that has a large cup size that has a 38 inch bust and things will fit totally different. So that's where this method is going to come into play because what they want you to do is base your pattern on this up here. It's like kind of based on the bust, but not entirely. It's more based on the whole bone structure, how much padding you have. You know what I mean? That's all going to be um, used in this method. And then knowing that patterns in generally are designed for a B cup, you can add or subtract if you need to, if the pattern is really tailored and you need a, a precise amount. So what it does is in, when you look at yourself in the mirror, there's gonna be, you know, just put your bra on or whatever, right here above 
your arms there's going to be a little wrinkle okay so when you're standing there you know shoulders back everything like that right where your arms join up here there's going to be a little wrinkle what you do is measure straight across here from wrinkle to wrinkle okay what that's going to do it it doesn't have anything to do with the bust size here it's just from wrinkle to wrinkle and that's going to give a measurement that will take into consideration your frame okay because once you have the neckline proportions right the shoulder proportions right the armhole proportions right the bust is actually easier than all of this to adjust in general so the way that Nancy explained it, and she has a chart, and it's very easy to remember because if this measurement here is 14 inches, it defaults to a size 14. So 14 is 14. And every half inch up, you go up a size. And every half inch smaller, you go down a size. So I want to show you the chart in here because... Uh, it makes it pretty easy so you can see here if that front width and that's what she calls it from that wrinkle to wrinkle let me see here's a little picture measuring from this wrinkle to this wrinkle okay from that point to that point if that is 14 inches you're going to default to a mrs size 14 and just about all patterns you know unless designated for youth or something are going to be misses and you'll see that right up here it's a misses pattern okay so if it's 14 inches it's 14 so say you're half an inch bigger it's going to say 16 half an inch bigger than that 18 half an inch bigger than that 20 okay that's that's what it's going to default to and it still goes down and sometimes what you find is you've been using a pattern that is much too big because you've just been going by the main bust size. And I found that to be true when I started using this. Now, I have gained weight since I started doing this. So this morning I went ahead and measured myself just, you know, for kicks and giggles. And lo and behold, I'm bigger than I used to be. That happens. That does happen. So um, they don't really... I mean, here you can take a picture of the chart if you want to. It has this measurement based on other size patterns, uh, women's patterns, half size patterns, junior patterns. But this is the main one. That's the one that, you know, I would say 99% of the adult patterns out there in general are that. So there are half sizes out there too, though, so that, that's helpful. So anyway, using this is what I would suggest. Now, if you are somewhere in between a couple of them, go down, all right? It's, it's a lot easier and you'll probably end up with a better fitting thing. So say you're like a little bit between 15 and 15 and a half, you know, in there, give or take. But you say you're in there, but in general you don't use really really tight fitting patterns or things like that go down go down to the lower pattern and you'll get a better fit in general so that is that now once you have that sizing taken care of then it's a matter of making all your other adjustments and i just grabbed this pattern off of my shelf because it's a very uh, simplistic type pattern where there's not a whole lot going on so we can see the body shape pretty easily okay so at that point what you're going to need to do is decide all right I know because you can get a good idea of where you are I know I have a smaller bust I'm just pretty much uniform all the way around well you probably won't have to do much adjustment but if you say okay I am smaller bust I mean, I am a smaller frame, and based on that front measurement right here, you're getting a pattern for a smaller frame, okay? You may need to do a full bust adjustment or a larger bust adjustment or something 
it depends on your own body and everything to make this fit. All right. So when I'm selecting a pattern, like say this pattern right here, I know that according to the chart, this chart, I should be using a size 16. Okay. I also know that my bust is larger than a B cup. So if it's a pattern that looks like there's a lot of fitting done around the bust, um, I make adjustments at that point. If I have a pattern that um, I know is going to fit me up here because I have my, my chart size and everything, but there's a whole lot of ease up around here, you know, and you can see how much ease is in a pattern um, on the back of the envelope. I'll show that in one second. Um, but if I know that there's a lot of ease built in, I'm not going to make that adjustment because in general, pattern companies will add enough in, in general, that I can get by with, you know, a cup or size or so larger. If it's a fitted garment, if there's darts or something like that, or it's a really, really special garment and you want to make sure that everything is perfect, well, yeah, then you go through and do the whole spiel with making a, a test garment and things like that and then making sure that you adjust it if you need to. But so say for this garment here, all right, what I have is, you know, this is the whole TMI, everything out there for the whole universe to hear. I fit, according to this chart, a size 16. My bust measurement is larger than what they have here, okay? My bust is actually 40-ish, you know, depending on the bra and whatever else, and they call for a 38. So what I do is I look down here and I can say, okay, so for my size 16, if, you know, for one of these things, either the top or the dress, what they want for that is it's going to give me a finished size of 40 and a half. Well, that's not very much ease. But you can see from here, based on the size, they have the size is for a 38 inch bust, the finished size is 40 inch. So they want you to have two and a half inches of ease. All right. Because that's the difference between the body size and the finish size. So what I then have to do, if I want my dress to drape according to the way that the designers intended, I need to make sure that I add two and a half inches of ease up here. And you can see here on her, yes, there's a little bit of ease around the bust, but not so much that it's really droopy, you know. So at that point, I would be adding that extra fullness, that extra two and a half inches in the front. I would not be adding it all over the back, if that makes any sense. Up here, so this is the front and this is the back, all right? Now, it has a dropped shoulder and everything, but it, I can tell that usually my bust line is going to be right about here at the bottom of the sleeve, okay? I have a few places to add, you know? I can add at the center front and I can add at the side. I probably would not be adding at the center back. Okay, so I have just taken this out of the pattern envelope. And while I have it out, I might as well just sew up one of these. I think I'll make that my, my next video after this. I'll just make up this dress. Okay, so put that aside for a minute. Um, so on here, on my bust piece number one, there's a couple options. First of all, if I look at the chart and on usually you know, usually is a big word. On the pattern piece where the bust is going to be on the front, it'll have listed all of the measurements. So for a size 16, their finished measurement is going to be 40 and a half. We know that. But it says for size 18, the finished measurement is 42 and a half. So 
I need the 16 for the shoulders and the neckline and basically the armhole, but I want to make sure I have at the, at the bust level size 18 cut out. Okay, and this is an extremely simple pattern. There are, as far as I can tell, there are no darts, there's no nothing. It's just pulling up and probably a zipper. Yeah, a zipper. So this will be actually pretty easy. So um, what I can do is up here, cut out my neckline. Let me raise you up here. So then like on this dress, and every pattern is different, and you kind of have to think your way through it and think of what to do. What I would do is cut out the size 16 at the neckline, cut out the size 16 of the shoulder, all right, and come down here. But when I get to this point where my fullest part of my bust is, I would come in and cut this at the size 18. All right, and I would do that both on the front and the back because there are no darts or anything to manipulate here. So I would cut this at the size 18 and then based on, you know, everything else, waist measurements, whatever. So say um, I have, you know, a decent size bust here. My waist is bigger than what they say. Let's see. They want you to have a 30 inch waist. Let's say my waist is 32 inches instead of 30 inches. All right, to keep the same amount of ease that they've built into their design, what I would need to do is at waist level, and they usually have the waistline marked, it's marked right here. Again, I would take what I need to increase. So from 30 inches to 32, I need to increase by two. All right, and I'm gonna divide that by half for the front pieces. So basically I need an extra half inch over here. So you have your bust all figured out here where you're gonna be cutting at this point. Now this is the waistline, all right? So what you would need to do is figure out, okay, am I going to continue on this size 18 waistline because that's what I needed for my bust? Or can I, from this point here, and it has the bust line. They don't actually have a bullet. Usually there's like a little bullseye bullet where they're assuming your bust is, but we're gonna call it right here, okay? You can either continue it here. So like, say you've been cutting, you turn this corner and you're cutting on the eight, size 18. If your waist matches up with the pattern dimensions waist, at this point, you can just taper it in towards the original one. If your waist is bigger at this point, you can taper it out. Or you can just cut out the upper part based on your waist because there's not much difference there, all right? And then the same thing for the hip measurement. They're going to, hopefully, on the pattern envelope. They don't give you the finished hip width, but we could measure it if we needed to. And the way that you would measure for, to find out what the width of the pattern is, because like on this one, they tell you what the bust is, but they don't tell you what the waist is, and they don't tell you what the hip is. In general, in general, patterns have the hip nine inches below the waist. So that may or may not match up with your body, but that's what they in general make it for. So if I measure nine inches down from here, I'm going to put a little mark right there. I can measure straight across to the cutting line, okay, which is 14 and 3 eighths. Now there's seam allowances, okay? So to take out a seam allowance here, five eighths and here a five eighths. That's an inch and a quarter I need to take out, which is gonna leave 13 and one eighth. So we'll just call it 13, you know, rounding it. So if it's 13 on one half of one piece, that means the total front piece is gonna be 26. The back piece will probably also be 26. In general, they're usually the same. 
when I add those two together, it's going to be 52 inch waist or 52 inch hip circumference. Okay, going around here. And then you can compare that to your body measurements to see if you need to adjust anything. So the, the, main, the main part of all of this is though picking the right size to start with because if you can get a good fit around your neck, on your shoulders, at your bust, you know, the armholes and everything, that is 90% a fitting issue up here and then everything else will hang better. I hope that that was helpful. And I know this is very short and everything, but I will be making up this dress. And again, if you want to study this, this system, this theory any further, I suggest you look up um, Nancy Zeman. Um, she has it, I think, listed in several of her books, her fitting books and things like that. But what she calls it is the front width is choosing a pattern based on the front width. All right. And one other thing that's in here, I mean, like on patterns in general, hopefully they will tell you how much ease. And on this one, it says total ease above body measurements is two and a half inches. Well, we figured that out already. But if it doesn't, what she has in here is in general for average garments, it says, um, for woven fabrics, this has nothing to do with knits, it's just for woven fabrics. There should be three to four inches in the bust, a half inch to one inch in the waist, and three to four inches in the hips as far as ease. So to make sure something fits you well, you can use that. So say you have a pattern, you've selected it based on that chart, you can make it work. Your, your actual bust is 40, and the ease is 40 and a half. Well, you can make that work, but it's going to be tight. So I would use, you know, a combination of her guidelines, how much ease you can tell that the designers intended with that particular design based on the bust measurement and the bust finished garment size, and just make your choices off of it that way. I'm not getting into full bust adjustment or any of that in this video. That's a, a whole nother ball of wax that we don't need to deal with today. But I just wanted to show that and I hope it's helpful. I will see you next time and I will be making this pattern. Thank you.